Hi, this is Azza Ching Lane and you're watching True School Sports. Woo! <laughs> Couple of good left hands there from Fury as well. A little warning from the referee about punching around the back of the head. Mikic has only knocked out five of his opponents. Fury. High contrast, 11. Fury, the man, certainly with more power. Now that jab. Jab was so sharp against Nikolai Fiatha. Looked a real weapon, but it hasn't done so so far tonight. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, in this particular video, I wanted to go to the way back machine. Way, way back. Alright? The year is 2011. Right? It's November of 2011. A, a man by the name of Luke Tyson Fury is on his way through the ranks as a heavyweight prospect. You know, fight by fight, brick by brick, inching closer and closer to developing into the next great and dominant factor in the heavyweight division. All right. Now, this is this is Tyson Fury when he was at that Commonwealth level. You know, this was this this was a very vulnerable Tyson Fury. You know, at this particular time, this is Tyson Fury when he was fighting the likes of John McDermott. You know, he you know got got a gift decision in that fight. You know, I I thought he lost that the first fight, but then he beat him in the rematch. Um, fought. He also fought. Nikolai Fertha, Nikolai Fertha hurt him and put him in some serious trouble. And then in this particular fight, he fought the former Canadian heavyweight champion. Yes, the Canadian heavyweight champion. Uh, your main man, coming to you live and direct from... He was born in Belgrade, Serbia, actually, but he migrated to Canada. But he became a Canadian heavyweight champion. You got Nevin Pajic, all right? He fought, a, he fought a guy by the name of Nevin Pajic in his third or 16th, uh, 17th professional fight. They're both 16 and 0 coming into this fight. Uh, Nevin Pajic had become had been a, a Canadian heavyweight champion. Um, he was a game opponent. He came into the fight at 34 years old, and this was the, this was a fight where I really believe the identity of Tyson Fury was beginning to become forged. Now, it is worth noting that this Tyson Fury, this version of Tyson Fury back in 2011, is not the Tyson Fury that we saw in the Wilder fight, one or two. It's not the Fury we saw in the Klitschko fight. This is a very uh, underdeveloped, still uh, evolving Tyson Fury, as most prospects are. But this, is, th this was a fight where he really began to forge his identity. So in this fight, it, there really isn't a lot to dissect. The fight only lasted three rounds. Tyson Fury stopped Devin Pajic in the third round. But um, he had a true watershed, a pivotal moment in his boxing career in the second round. So in the second round, he... Um, he switches off for a bit. He loses focus for a bit. And the moment he does, Nevin Pajic lands a brutal right hook. A brutal right hook that lands right on Tyson Fury's chin. Squarely right on his chin. Putting pressure all up on that chin. Puts him, puts him on his ass and kind of wakes him up, you know. And Pajic... You know, he came, he came for the smoke after that. He tried to stop him and hand him his first L. And could you imagine, had he stopped him, how much different the course of history would have changed forever? Tyson Fury might have lost that fight, spiraled into depression, mental health problems, and never been the same heavyweight, and then he's a cautionary tale of what if. But that wasn't the case. Fast forward, third round. We get to the third round. Uh, Tyson Fury seems to actually have gotten better and stronger from the uh from fr from the knockdown and sometimes like you get you get fighters sometimes where it's like they got to be in trouble to wake up you know the psychology of them has to be that they're in trouble and they have to get up off the deck to wake up and fury is one of those guys where it's as as crazy as it is to say and as you know contradicting as it sounds he's almost one of those one of those fighters that likes to that likes pain that likes to get hurt and he kind of needs that and he needs that fear factor to be the best version of himself otherwise He'll get in trouble, and he'll he'll uh, he'll be in danger to lose a fight, or he'll, or he won't perform as well. That's why 
I think that when he fights the best fighters in the world or the guys that are perceived to be the best fighters in his division, like a Klitschko or like a Deontay Wilder, he performs at his best because there's that fear factor. But when he fights guys that are deemed as not on his level or not threats like Otto Wallen, Nevin Pajic, Steve Cunningham, um, Nikolai Furtha, these are actually the toughest fights of his career. John McDermott, these are all the tough, these have all, you could, you could put all these in, 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 in the bracket of, of fights where Fury is, um, is, has underwhelmed and looked vulnerable, you know? So he, in, in the third round, Tyson Fury uh, ultimately wound up doing what he does best. He got up off the deck, he fought his ass off, and he, and he, and he folded this dude up, stopped him in the third round, okay? Uh, muscled, he muscled, he muscled him all the way, all, all around the ring. And that's just what it was. He stopped him in the, in the, in the third round. And it wasn't a fight, it, like, it, it wasn't a fight that, um, that lasted too long. There's not a ton to dissect. Because, and I would advise, if you haven't seen this fight, and if you're someone who is a Tyson Fury fan, or you want to know more about the career of Tyson Fury, go watch him in that fight. He didn't, he didn't look that impressive. You know, he looked very vulnerable and, and and there was a lot of questions and a lot of doubts being thrown on Tyson Fury at this particular time. I would say up until the Klitschko fight, you know, people were, were really skeptical about Tyson Fury because he seemed to have vulnerable performance, underwhelming performances when he was a prospect. Um, you know, the Nevin Pajic fight, the John McDermott first fight, um, Nikolai Fertha was another one. But if you look at the Nikolai Fertha fight and you look at the uh, John uh, Nikolai Fertha fight and the Nevin Pajic fight. These are both fights where we, where we can see the so some of the qualities and characteristics of Tyson Fury developing before our very eyes as a young prospect. You know, he got dropped, he got hurt, he looked vulnerable, he was put in uh, some tough positions and was taken to some deep, dark, and uncomfortable places. And what did he do? He got up off the deck, or he recuperated after getting hurt from a from a big punch. And he fought even harder and came even harder. And he folded these dudes up like a blue steel chair, like Chris Jericho, like my man The Rock used to do on Thursday Night SmackDown. Shout out to The Rock on Thursday Night SmackDown. You know, he, he, he showed the ability to continue fighting at an even higher intensity when he got hurt. And, and, and it, you know, we've seen, we've seen fighters with that characteristic in boxing. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, very few fighters can fight at his level of intensity when they get hurt, you know, and that's one quality I think you could see in these fights developing um, or being displayed for us to see with our own eyes. You know, some some of us have two, some of us have four, with our own eyes. And um, these are some of the same qualities that he uh, exhibited in the first Deontay Wilder fight. You know, he got hurt brutally in the twelfth round, um, got hit by one of the most devastating punches you'll ever see a heavyweight get hit with. Somehow he gets up, and you know the only way I could explain how he got up was nothing but divine intervention, and um, he won the rest of that round from the moment he got up to the, to, to the moment the round concluded. The, the remaining two minutes of that round, he won the rest of that round, and if he and and that's why I think Fury actually he didn't he didn't win the fight against Wilder um, on December the first, twenty eighteen, or February twenty second, twenty twenty. You know, he won those. He he beat he beat Deontay Wilder when he was a prospect because of the experience he got and, and, and the situations he was put in. And that's why I say it's very important to get quality ring experience as a prospect because if you don't, when you step up to, when you step up to those those high levels, the championship levels, it's gonna really show. And that was the difference to me. Fury had been in vulnerable situations, so he knew how to get up off the deck or when he was hurt by a big punch and, and, and have success after that being a wounded uh, animal. As to where Wilder, when he was a prospect, he was somebody that when he hits you, he was used to you just folding, folding up because she uh, Shelly Finkel put him in a witness, witness protection program for boxing and picked opposition that would pad his record. You see what I'm saying? As to where Fury, they, 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 got, they got him the right fights for him that worked at the right time. And um, that's the difference to me between Fury, that's the difference between, even like, look, even, um, not, not, not to show on AJ, AJ had some good fights too, but I think AJ coming into the pros was uh, a bit more polished than Fury. Um, so when you put him in there with the likes of like, I don't know, Nevin Pajic, maybe he would have stopped Nevin Pajic because he was stopping guys like that early in his career, you know, like Michael Sprott and guys like that. Um, but Fury's, 
Fury got a lot of confidence for that fight, and, and, and it's these fights and it's and it's these quality rounds of in-ring experience that Fury can always draw back on if he ever gets put in an uncomfortable situation or a vulnerable situation against you know Wilder in the third fight or Joshua in the fight for Undisputed. So that's just my little take on Tyson Fury going down memory lane, uh, revisiting his fight with Nevin Pajic. If you haven't watched it, it's only going to take you about not even 10 minutes. So go go pull it up on YouTube. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, take, the time, take the time to subscribe. We're on the road to 30,000 subscribers. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that milestone when we hit it. So if you're here, help your boy BT get to 30-30K. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Dean. So until next time, take care, guys. My name is Rachel McDonough.